Taylor Swift is a very popular and polarizing figure, and also the sky is blue. But what's undeniable is she's been able to churn out hit after hit for nearly two decades, with her unique and catchy melodies frequently doing the bulk of the heavy lifting. Let's talk about it. What's up guys, my name is Connor and welcome to the Songwriter Sanctuary. If this is your first time here and you like what you find, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Your support goes a tremendously long way. So today we're going to be analyzing some of Taylor Swift's melodies and I'm going to be picking apart some tips and techniques that she uses to ensure that they're as catchy as possible. We'll also be exploring how you can adopt some of these tricks into your own arsenal and apply them to your own songwriting. And if you stick around till the very end, the last trick has a bit of an interesting twist that I think you'll appreciate. Let's get on into it. So the first trick we're going to look at is Taylor Swift Swift's heavy use of the one, two, and three. When I call out these numbers, I'm referring to scale degrees. A major scale sounds like this. And the one, two, and three refer to the first three notes in this scale. If you think about it in terms of solfege, you know, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. The one, two, and the three is gonna be do, re, mi. So this is maybe the single melody trick that Taylor Swift has used the most over the course of her entire career. Here's a few examples. Honestly, I could go on and on and on and on. She's done this in so many songs, I could sit here and list them all day. It's also a technique that she shares in common with Post Malone, and if you don't believe me, watch that video after you finish with this one. So what does this technique actually do? Well, it limits the melody to just a few notes to ensure that her melodies are constrained and easy to understand. She's not jumping around unnecessarily and randomly. She keeps her melodies instead in a very predictable range. And then when she does make a jump, it's way more surprising and impactful. Which leads us to trick number two. The second technique we're gonna look at is her use of the five, specifically how she jumps up to it from the one, two, and the three that she loves so much. Very frequently, when she's constructing melodies comprised primarily of the one, two, and three, she'll introduce a sudden five in order to create a sense of lift. Once you're used to the first three notes in that scale, it's refreshing and satisfying to have that sudden jump. So you can do this too. If you're writing a melody and you want to create a special moment, start with the one, two, and the three, and then when you want that special moment to appear, add in a five, create a little jump. Here's one more example from one of my songs, a song I wrote nearly 10 years ago called Dear Elise. Dear Elise, I miss you. Was it something inside that made you want to turn around? All right, so the third trick we're gonna explore is her use of the pentatonic scale. The pentatonic scale is the one, two, three, five, and six in any major key. It looks like this. So what Taylor likes to do is run up and down the scale at various points to create this really smooth and fluid movement. And to be honest, there's no real particular magic here. This is something that most of, if not all pop artists do regularly. But she does it with an expert touch. And if you're new to melody writing and you're trying to come up with a way to write catchy melodies, this is a simple technique you can employ with a high success rate and studying Taylor Swift is a great way to learn how to use it effectively. Here's some examples. She wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts. So if you're not sure what to do, literally just take your chord progression, find a rhythm you like, and run the pentatonic scale up and down. I'll just make up an example right now. Okay, so the fourth technique we're gonna explore is her tendency to oscillate back and forth between two notes. Usually it's the one and the three or the six and the three. She loves jumping between these two scale degrees. And what she will do is she'll do so in a very steady way. The rhythm's consistent. She's either hitting each note once or just a couple of times, but the movement itself is very predictable. But because we're jumping up and down the scale, skipping a note or a few notes every time, we have this very nice bouncing, vibrating rhythm that accompanies the melody. Trouble when you walked in I'm like the water when your ship rolled in that night He's so tall and handsome as hell 
Again, this is super easy to implement. Just take whatever chord progression you're trying to write to and pick two notes. You can even take the one and the three or the six and the three like Taylor does. Just try not to copy her directly. I find it's more fun to add a little variety though, because this will work with a lot of different scale degrees. Here's an example with the five and the two. All right, the final technique we are going to discuss is her use of non-lexical vocables. So before you run and grab your dictionary, what that actually means is just different mouth sounds and non-word syllables. A bit of a confession here, this really isn't a melody technique. It's more of a lyrical technique, but she often uses it to enhance and accentuate the melody tricks that she does use. It's interesting and I just thought it was worth talking about. Just so you get the idea of what it is, here's a couple examples of exactly how she uses this trick. So what this can do is it can help a listener know the lyrics even when they don't know the lyrics because there are no lyrics. It's very easy to remember and sing. The cost of entry to singing along with the song is super low because you don't have to do any of the legwork of learning the lyrics. All you have to do is remember a single syllable or maybe two and you can immediately jump in and start singing along. It can also be a bit of a controversial technique as best exemplified by one of my favorite childhood cartoons. Slumming in at number two are songs that try to pass off lalas, nanas, and doot doos as legit lyrics as evidenced in limousines bizarrely titled Feed the Children's. Na, na, la, la, la. Hey, 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 doo -doo -doo. Not only does Taylor Swift use this technique with alarming regularity, but she will often dedicate an entire section to just vocal noises. <laughs> Once again, piece of cake to implement. Just pick a syllable like ooh or ah, find a catchy melody, and try it yourself. Whoa, uh, uh. That's pretty much all we got. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. If I missed any other obvious tricks that Taylor Swift uses, let me know down in the comments below. Once again, if you got value out of this video, which I'm hoping and assuming you did because you made it this far, please subscribe to this channel and like this video. And that's all she wrote. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.